Hello and welcome to what I read in May and let's go ahead and just get into all the books that I read. I will be looking at my list off screen. Uh, so the first book that I read was The Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. This is about in Texas in 1934, millions of people were out of work and a drought had broken through the Great Plains. Elsa Martinelli must make an agonizing choice to stay or to go to California. I give this book four stars. It was a very emotional book. If you've read other books by Kristen Hanna, you know how she hits that emotional core. And it's a historical fiction book. So yes, it's based on historical events, but it is ultimately fiction at the end of the day. Um, but it really did feel real. The characters felt real. Um, they were so well written that you really thought that these people existed. Uh, I enjoyed following the characters and seeing their growth throughout the book. However, I did think it could use some editing because there were a lot of things that were brought up over and over again. And we were like, okay, you already said that. Um, but overall, I really did enjoy Four Winds. Then I reread Queenie by Candace Carty Williams. So Queenie is struggling with her breakup from her boyfriend, a boss who doesn't seem to listen to her, uh, and a family who doesn't listen as well. Uh, I give this book four stars. I've reread this. This is maybe the second time I've read it. Uh, I really do feel like Queenie is like fully developed throughout the book. I really enjoy reading um, from her perspective. Obviously your girl is struggling. She's going through a lot of different things as you can see throughout the book, but I really do like the character. I think it's fun. It's a nice quick read. Uh, I actually reread this cause I'm doing the A through Z challenge. So this perfectly hits my cue. And I read Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. When Wallace dies and is attending his own funeral, he is collected by a reaper to pass over. Wallace is not ready to abandon the life he barely lived. I give this four and a half stars. It's a really interesting book. Uh, it's not really exactly what I thought it was going to be. I love how the cranky guy kind of turns it around. Wallace is very cranky in life. He's not necessarily a nice person. Uh, he doesn't necessarily care about other people, but in the afterlife, he genuinely cares about other people. So that's kind of refreshing to see how he turns it around. And he also focuses on helping other people. Uh, I kind of do wish he was more likable in the beginning so we could root, root for him in life and then in the afterlife, but I understand the purpose of that. Uh, I do think the focus on death is pretty unique in this story and it brings a lot of oomph to the story. It's a pretty interesting read. I would recommend it. Then I read I Have Some Questions For You by Rebecca Maikai. Bodie Kane is a successful podcaster and film professor, and she's invited back to her boarding school she attended to teach a two-week seminar. While there, she kind of reinvestigates the murder of a former roommate. And, uh, you know, she's just trying to get past the past. <laughs> I gave this three and a half stars. I feel like the premise had promise, like the story sounds pretty interesting, but the main character felt very annoying to me at times and just kept pushing for this podcast, kept pushing for the story to be told and just kept pushing you to look at one of the specific characters as the suspect didn't turn out to be a suspect in the murder, but turned out to be a suspect in other things. So it was just kind of like annoying to see her perspective. I would have rather had a different perspective to follow than hers. But overall, it was an interesting read. Then I read XOXO by Axio. <laughs> Jenny is a cellist who's focused on getting into the school of her dreams when she meets Jai Wu and they have a fun night together before he leaves. Uh, Jenny and her mom then move to Korea to take care of her grandmother and she ends up at the same school as Jae Woo and he, she finds out his big secret is he's in a K-pop band. Can you tell this is a YA story <laughs> from my description? I read this for my YA challenge for May. Um, I gave this three stars. You know, YA books are not my go-to. 
uh, just because they're a little silly um, for me. I know some of them can be, you know, in depth, but this one was okay. Uh, it went quickly. I just think the premise was a little far fetched, but you know, it was a cute little story and it checked off my X for my A to Z as well. Then I read Zori by Laird Hunt. Uh, as a girl, Zori is modest and hardworking after her parents and her aunt die, leaving to her to fend for herself. Spanning a lifetime in Indiana, the portrait of losses in life as she, you know, grows up essentially by herself. I gave this five stars. I really loved reading the book. I really loved following Zori as a character. It's actually a very short book. So it's really simple writing. The plot is kind of simple, but the writing style just has a big impact on you and the character has a big impact on you as well. I also really enjoyed like the atmosphere of the small town that she like ends up in. The way that emotions are conveyed is really nice. Then I read Two Can Keep a Secret by Karen McManus. Echo Ridge is a small town with huge mysteries. When Ellery moves there, moves there, more mysteries begin to pop up. That's kind of as much as I detail as I want to get into because I don't want to give away like a lot of the plot. But I gave this book four stars. This is actually YA as well. So it's kind of more of a well done YA to me. Uh, a very quick read. The mystery was pretty interesting. Trying to figure out what happened in the past and in the present with what's going on and how they're connected. Then I read The Other's Gold by Elizabeth Ames. I picked this up at a library book sale uh, maybe last year or earlier this year. Assigned to the same suite during their freshman year, Lainey, G. Sun, Alice, and Margaret quickly become inseparable. The story follows the four friends as they each make a terrible mistake and follows the fallout from each of their mistakes and how they stick together or kind of struggle after each of their mistakes. I get this four stars. Uh, I enjoyed reading about the friendships between each other and all the characters are so different and it really helps that all the characters have their own like unique story and how they act around each other and individually. The mistakes are <laughs> pretty interesting to read about so I would kind of suggest looking into that book. Then I read Stone Cold Fox by Rachel Collar Craft. Bia was raised by a mother who conned her way through life. Bia takes the lessons she learned to try to marry the heir to one of the country's wealthiest families. I gave this four and a half stars. It was almost five for me. Um, I think this is a first novel for the author. So I think there's some writing and editing that could be used, but ultimately I really enjoyed reading this story. It was really fun to kind of get into the mind of ultimately like a con woman and a kind of a narcissist and really follow that character as she tries to outsmart the people around her to try and marry into this really crazy rich family. <laughs> then I read Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfeld. Writer Sally has given up on the search for love, propelled by her annoyance when yet another average man gets involved with an incredibly glamorous woman. Um, Sally writes a sketch on how it's unlikely to happen in the reverse until she hits it off with a handsome pop star. Uh, I gave it four stars. It's obviously kind of like a wink and nod at SNL throughout the story. And it's not necessarily like a ro typical romantic comedy book. It's more focused on how the characters deal with fame and the idea of fame and how they can be like more normal people. Uh, there were some times where I was like, hmm, this doesn't really seem like normal dialogue two people would have necessarily, but it was a fun read and it was kind of cool to look into like celeb culture when they're dating like normal people. <laughs> then I read Evie Dark Starts Over by Linda Holmes. Evie is starting over after her husband unexpectedly dies and her best friend's friend is also starting over and needs a place to stay. She has an open room 
and they strike a deal to kind of ignore the issues at hand, but they find themselves getting closer together. I gave this book just three stars. I was at the library and I was just kind of browsing and I saw it. I was like, let me give it a chance. It was just kind of okay. It was a very just okay book. I didn't really feel the connection between the characters. The plot was just kind of plain. It didn't really dive too much into depth. Um, it was a quick read, so yeah. Then I read Meet Me at the Lake by Carly Fortune. Fern's life is not what she imagined it would be. She's back at home after her mom dies running the resort that her family owned. And the man helping her is someone from her past that seems like nothing he planned to be. Uh, I gave this four stars. I really like the way this author writes. This is this, her second book and I read her first one as well. And I really enjoy how she kind of lays out the, the scenery and how her characters are written as well. I do, I did enjoy the story. I just kind of wish for a little bit more depth from the characters. But I really did like Fern, uh, the main, the man main character. We didn't get as much depth into, and I'm honestly forgetting his name too, which is probably not a good sign for that. But I did enjoy the story. Then I read Happy Place by Emily Henry. Wynn and Harriet are the perfect couple in the eyes of their friends, but they broke up a few, few months ago and have been hiding it from their friends. Well, they all go on a retreat together and they decide to kind of act like they're still together for the purpose of their friends. Um, I gave this book five stars. This is my favorite Emily Henry so far. I probably should reread the other Emily Henrys to kind of rank them in my mind, but I really enjoy Emily Henry's writing, but this so far has been my favorite. I always felt like something was missing in the other ones and I felt like this one hit all the notes I wanted. The friendships felt real and genuine. The relationship felt real and genuine. Um, I was getting in the middle of the book. I was like, I really hope what I want to happen happens. Um, but I kind of kind of understand how it went either way. Um, the love felt real. The messiness of it felt really real. And I would highly recommend Happy Place. So those are all the books I read in May. And it's crazy to think we're almost halfway through the year. So leave any me any recommendations down below. I've almost finished my A to Z challenge. So, you know, I've tried to hit a lot of those goals in the first half of the year. And just leave me any recommendations. And I hope you guys have a great summer.